So this is our last lesson for this chapter. And you've already kind of been exposed to an outlier. An outlier is just a point that is pretty far away from the least squares line. And I want to pop back and show you where we first saw it. Back in 12.2, when we were first kind of talking about if it was a positive relationship or not, we had this second graph where most of the points were very close to a line, and you had this point way out here that was called, this, this is what's called an outlier. It is not close to the line, but it is part of the data set. The residuals are very large. Now, if you only have one or two of the points, they're going to influence the outcome of your line, but it's not going to skew it too far off. If you have several of these points, they can actually skew your line so much that there is no relationship in your data. So when you're identifying outliers, the rule of thumb is you can flag any point that is located more than two standard deviations above or below the best fit line. That would be an outlier. So more than two standard deviations away. And when you think about it, going back way back to the empirical rule. So as this rule of thumb, we can kind of flag any point that's further than two standard deviations above or below the best fit line as an outlier. And that makes sense because when we go all the way back to our empirical rule, within one standard deviation away from the mean, it was 68% of our data fell. Within two standard deviations, 95% uh, of our data fell. So it makes sense that an outlier would probably be further away than two standard deviations away. I'm working with the third exam and final exam data still. So it was in the TI-84+, plus. so I just ran my linear regression test to find out what our standard deviation of the data is. Our standard deviation is 16.4124. I'm going to utilize the standard deviation and figure out two standard deviations above the linear regression line and two standard deviations below the linear regression line. So I'm going to plot not only my scatter, but I'm also going to plot three lines. The linear regression line, a line that is two uh, standard deviations above the linear regression line, and the line two standard deviations below the linear regression line. Any point that is above or below my two lines that are um, two standard deviations away will be an outlier. So let me show you what my equations are. My y1 is my linear regression line. So negative 173.5 plus 483x. Now you might be wondering why do I have one in y2 and why do I have one in y6? I like the colors of red and, and orange and if I had another orange I would actually actually change it to orange. But um, for quickness I went ahead and just chose red to signify a, two standard deviations above my linear regression line and orange to signify the, the one that is two standard deviations below the linear regression line. So how do I do that? Well that's where standard deviation comes in. So my y2 is my same equation except I'm going to add two standard deviations. So plus two times the 16.4. For my one below it, it is the same equation except minus two standard deviations. So neg minus two times 16.4. Now I'm gonna plot not only my scatters, my x's and y's, but these three lines as well. So zoom nine, zoom stat, and here we go. If we have any, line, any dots above or below the red or orange line, then we have outliers. So it looks like we have one point that is above our two standard deviations above our red line. 
but we have no points less than our orange line, which is two standard deviations below. So we have one outlier, which is great because they got the same answer as we are. We have one outlier for this data set. Now I understand that sometimes you, you don't have a calculator that you can graph it and look at it. So there's a little bit of work that we can do. Now generally there are calculators out there that will calculate the standard deviation. Once you calculate the standard deviation, then what you're going to do is for every x value, you're going to plug it into your equation, your linear regression equation, equation and get this corresponding y hat. Then you're going to take your actual y value, subtract your y hat, and you will get this residual amount. This is the residual amount that you are going to compare with two times the standard deviation. You do need to compare it with two values of the standard deviation. One is values above it and values below it. But let's take a look at this. When we throw in 65 into our uh, linear regression line, we get a 140 out of it. So 175 minus 140 is, one, is 35. Standard deviation of 16.4 times 2 is a 32.8, and therefore 35 is greater than a 32.8. And we can say that is definitely an outlier. Now negative 2 times 16.8 is a negative 32.8. So if we have any values that fall between negative 32.8 and positive 32.8, those are not considered outliers. So let's throw in our next x value. If we throw in our x value into our equation, we get 50. 133 minus 150 is negative 17. That is not outside of the normal range. Remember, anything less than negative 32.8 and anything greater than positive 32.8, those are going to be, be considered outliers. If we continue to do this for every x value, we can see there is only one value that is the outlier. And that was our first point. Again, it's great if we have a calculator that can plot these because we can definitely see there is an outlier and there are no other outliers. But if we do not have a calculator that can graph, then we're going to rely on some math skills. It is, I don't want to say it's busy work. It's a little tedious, but the math isn't too hard. It's always plugging it into your linear regression, seeing what the y hat is, subtracting the two, and comparing that with two standard deviations. All right, so how does this outlier affect our best line? Well, it does affect it slightly. If we remove that point and reevaluate, we'll get a different line, and our R value will be different as well. So if we took out this point of 65, 175, that's our outlier, and just throw out that point and do the best fit line again, we get a different line. We get negative 355.19 plus 7.39x, and our R value is 0 0.9121. It is a stronger correlation. Remember, our original was 0 0.6631. So it has grown tremendously a stronger correlation. It's very, very close to 1. And because of that, that outlier is influencing our correlation. Now, it has been done where uh, you throw out an outlier because that, that's just some strange point. It's affecting it. And once you find your outlier, if you have just one of them, maybe throw it out and redo your values to see what would be the correlation. Do you get a stronger correlation? All right. So uh, we do have numerical identification of outliers. Uh, we'd have to calculate our standard deviation and then the, find the outliers manually. The way that you're going to do it is with technology. So if you want to see 
the grunt work of how this is calculated, please walk through this. But I'm not going to go through this because you're going to be using technology. Um, it's, it's just due to our time constraint of summer. If this was an on-ground class and this was a normal semester, I would walk through this so you can get appreciation of all the work that, that goes into this and maybe get a deeper understanding of it. But because we're in such a condensed um, semester, I'm going to just let you use technology and not worry about manually calculating this. All right, uh, so let's run through an example of trying to find if we have any outliers. Now we have um, X values, we have Y values. I'm going to put it into the TI-84. I'm going to plot it. Okay. First thing I want to do is clear out all my lists because I do need at least L1, L2. I could put them in other lists, but I like putting my X's in L1 and my Y's in L2. So I'm going to say second memory and I'm going to jump to clear all lists, which is number four and clear all my lists at the same time. I could do them individually, but I'm going to go ahead and clear all the lists all at one time. Now that we have our list cleared out, I'm going to input my data. Now that we have our data in our list, we can run our test. Uh, so we're going to do a linear test. It is our F test. There we go. List 1 are our X values. Uh, list 2 are our Y values. They happen frequency of 1. We're going to assume that our H alternative is row does not equal 0 and we're going to calculate it. The reason why we are doing this is number one, we want to draw a scatter plot. Number two, we want to calculate our least, least squares line. Third, we're going to draw our line on our scatter plot of trying to figure out if we have any outliers. We're also going to find our correlation coefficient and figure out if it's significant. And then we want to know what our average would be for 1990. In other words, we want to predict our average for 1990 because that's not in our data. Okay, our p-value is extremely small. It is 0 0.0000538 and therefore we can say it is uh, p-value is less than our alpha, and therefore it is not significant. We would reject H0. Our A-value is negative 3204.42. Our V-value is 1.66. So our linear regression line is going to be y-hat equals our negative 3204.42. I'll just keep it as two decimals plus 1.66x will be our linear, our line of regression. And to figure out if we have any outliers, I want to be able to do a line that is two standard deviations above and two standard deviations below. And to do that, I definitely need to know what my standard deviation is as well. So s equals 25.38. I'm going to go ahead and plot these three lines uh, using my y hat 4204.42 plus 1.66x will be our line of linear regression. We'll say two standard deviations above is going to be the same line except I'm going to multiply it by two standard deviations, add that two standard deviations above at the end. So plus two times our standard deviation of 25.38. Now I'm going to go over to my orange line because I do like the orange line to go along with the red line. 
And again, we're going to plug in our value. But instead of adding two standard deviations, I'm going to take two standard deviations away. All right, so now I'm going to go to our zoom and go ahead and plot our values. Okay, so looking at our three lines, the blue line is our best fit line. And our red line is two standard deviations above. Our orange line is two standard deviations below. And we can see one outlier. It is just barely an outlier, but it is an outlier there. We want to make a prediction for 1990. So I'm going to use my equation and predict what 1990 will yield. So negative 3204.42 plus 1.66 times our 1990 year. This is going to be our prediction. And it should result in 98.98. I just want to make sure that I ran through each of these. Yes, we drew the scatter plot. Yes, we calculated our least squares line. Yes, we drew the line on the scatter plot. In fact, we drew two more lines to show us if there were any outliers. We found the correlation coefficients. Is it significant? Well, we saw that our p-value was smaller than our alpha, and therefore, no, it's not significant. And our average CPI for the year 1990 was 98.98. All right, so ours looks very similar to theirs. And although they didn't show any outliers, we do have 1999 was very close to being on the upper line, but they said it was still inside it. My graph showed that it was outside it, well, kind of on it, but it was on the outside of the line. So I would say 1999 was slightly an outlier, but, but barely. All right, so this one was a little bit lengthier than I wanted it to be, but that's it for now. Until next time, be seeing ya.